that have great pride in the WB logo. And you'll stop it to go in blue. It is a great night to be a Mountaineer wherever you may be. What's going on, Mountaineer Nation? Welcome into another live stream here on the Country Roads webcast channel. Special edition today, our CRW signing day extravaganza, as we've coined it here. Going to try and cover some of these commits for West Virginia. You know, I originally planned to start this thing up about 8.30 this morning, but multiple reasons, you know, had to delay it and uh, push it back here to an 11.30 start. But that's okay, because uh, at this point, we already have, I think, 16 players that have already signed their letters of intent. So we have a ton of catching up to do, so we'll dive right in here on it. But want to encourage you guys here as we're live throughout, as always, drop your questions, comments, concerns in the chat there. I'll try and touch on those throughout here, be with you guys for the next little bit here. As we continue to try and cover these, I'm going to catch up on all of them that have come through, try and go through them uh, chronologically here, and uh, then we'll try and catch up and see if we can uh, get some as they come in here. Um, and National Sign Day for West Virginia, building this uh, 2024 class. Appreciate everyone that's in here live. I see you in here, Timmy and Bob, Baxter, several people in here. If you are in here live, I ask you to do us a favor. Just hit the thumbs up button real quick. That helps us out a ton. And if you're a WVU football fan and you haven't already, be sure to subscribe here. We're covering recruiting, roster management, transfer portal stuff, and a little bit of basketball as well. So be sure to follow us here on the Country Roads webcast if you don't already. And with no further ado, let's dive in here, starting with the uh, first commit that came through on the day. I believe this was back at 730 uh, West Virginia added Makai Byerson, who had previously verbally committed to the class there, an edge rusher from the state of Virginia there. Manchester High School was the first letter of intent to come in for West Virginia this morning. So having said that, let's take a look now at Neil Brown's uh, thoughts here. Share this video with you guys. going to try and do these for every one of the uh, letters of intent that West Virginia signed here on the West Virginia football recruiting page. They've been sharing Clips from Neil Brown talking about uh, these letters of intent as they've came in. Here are his thoughts on Makai Byerson. Makai Byerson, welcome back to West Virginia. He's a legacy. His dad played basketball here, and now Makai joins us to play defensive end. Can't wait to get him here and have Coach Jackson work with him. So there's Coach Brown's thoughts in regards to the signing of Makai Byerson. Now let's take a look at his ratings on uh, 247 Sports. If I can pull this up here, guys, bear with me. As we said, six foot four, 235 pound edge rusher out of the state of Virginia. First letter of intent to come in for West Virginia today. 87 rating on a th as a three star recruit there on 247, rated as the number 52 edge rusher in the country and a top 20 player in the state of Virginia there, nearly a top 16 player there. I mean, top 15, excuse me, rated as the 16th uh, best player in the state of Virginia. So 
now that we've uh, taken a look at his announcement and his ratings, as well as Coach Brown's thoughts, we can do the final step that we're going to do here for each one of these uh, incoming recruits. And that's, of course, taking the ones that are verbally committed and added them to our signing list. And we may have some surprises pop up on that signing list. That's what we're hoping for. I know of a big name receiver that we're hoping flips to West Virginia that's already committed to another Big 12 Power 5 program. We'll see if that happens or not. But as I search for Makai Byerson, I know he's on here. There he is. We'll move him up to the signings list for West Virginia now. And then we will uh, move on to our next player. I'm going to run through a few of these, try and catch up on some comments. And then uh, I'm going to try and hit the, as many of these as I can, though, to try and catch us up uh, to be up current before we get another letter of intent in, which may have already happened. We'll see what happens here once we catch up. But uh, so you got Makai Byerson there, the first signing of the day for West Virginia was that was announced there. And then next up, if I can uh, get it here, there we are. Next up this morning, West Virginia announced the signing. And I like this one a lot, guys. We've talked about him on the channel before. Kyle Altooner, he's an offensive lineman. I think he'll end up playing the center position. You know, I think he's a guy with a ton of upside. I think, you know, obviously Zach Frazier, you know, I, when I mentioned that, that's high praise. And I don't want to make that comparison and put that much on this young man coming in just as a true freshman. But I say that because, you know, Zach Frazier, I think, was a little bit underrated as a recruit. People probably didn't realize how good of a player we were getting for the offensive line. I don't think Kyle Altooner will have to come in and play as a true freshman right away or anything like Zach Frazier did just due to the state that things were in when Neil Brown, the staff, first took over before they built this offensive line. I think now this offensive line is at a good point where we don't have to do that. But I think in the future, Kyle Altooner will be a piece for this West Virginia offensive line, potentially at the center position, maybe after Brandon Yates takes over that spot in 2024 for West Virginia. But excited about his addition. But that's enough of my thoughts on this recruit out of Maryland. Let's hear Coach Brown's thoughts. Let me pull this back up with you guys more here. Coach Brown's thoughts on um, the addition of Kyle Altooner here. Scroll up to his uh, video here, and then I will share it with you guys. Bear with me here as I pull this stuff up. Try to do all this on the fly, of course. Kyle Altooner from Good Council High School, one of the top high school programs in the entire country. Kyle is our center of the future. Under Armour All-American, and he's a guy that's going to pave the way for our big-time running backs. Kyle. There you go. So high praise coming from the head man himself right now on Kyle Altooner's letter of intent that came in this morning. Let's take a look at some of his ratings now on 247 Sports. Six foot two, 290 pound center there from the state of Maryland. As I mentioned, good council high school there. 87 rating, three star recruit rated as the number 66 inside offensive lineman in the country and a top 25 recruit in the state of Maryland who produces uh, some really good recruits there. So excited about Kyle Altooner. And with that announcement of his addition, now let's take him and add him to the signings list here on the Country Roads webcast now as we continue to move through some of these letter of intents that have come in for West Virginia today. We now know Kyle Altooner will officially join the team so we can take him from a verbal commitment to a signing as we did with Makai Byerson before him. So you see there, recruit out of Virginia, recruit out of Maryland were the first two recruits, one on each side of the ball there in the trenches for the Mountaineers, the first two letter of intents to come in. And then next up, let's see who we had next come in this morning. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it was an in-state recruit, and it was, yes. Curtis Jones, let's share this here. This was the announcement from the WVU football page there on their social media. Welcome to Almost Heaven, Curtis Jones Jr. Obviously the in-state prospect there from Cabell Midland High School in Morgantown, and Neil Brown provided his thoughts on the addition of Curtis Jones Jr. as well. If I can pull that video up here momentarily, and we will share that as well. There we are. From Huntington, West Virginia, Cabell Midland High School, Curtis Jones Jr. Two-time All-State selection. Cannot wait for him to suit up right here in his home state for the Mountaineers. So you love to hear Neil Brown's thoughts on it. And just to add to it, you know, I think that Neil Brown and this staff has done a great job recruiting the um, in-state players at West Virginia. That's something he mentioned, I think, in his very first press conference at WVU was talking about locking down the state and landing the top recruits in the state. And I think 
Every single year since he's been here, he has landed either the number one or number two rated player in the state of West Virginia. He did a good job in this class landing some in-state prospects, and we're hoping to hear later on from another one that's down here where I'm at in Mercer County that I think could be a big addition for West Virginia. They finally sent him out an offer, which, you know, better late than never. I thought it should have already came. You guys have saw me push for that on the channel before we're talking about Dom Collins, the wide receiver from Princeton. I think he's announcing at 315, 345, I want to I say, but – in regards to Curtis Jones, I think he's going to be a good addition for the future of West Virginia there at the linebacker position. You love adding those in-state players. Let me share his ratings here on 247. Six foot one, 205, obviously going to probably put on a little weight once he comes in and uh, gets in the program there with Mike Joseph, and I think he'll do a good job of doing that, obviously. An 86 rating is a three-star recruit. 111th ranked linebacker nationally, number three player in the state of West Virginia, according to 247 Sports. So, as I said, Neil Brown continuing to lock down the top recruits in the state and uh, with the announcement of his addition we can also now add him to the signings list move him from the verbal commitment to a signing here and um, as soon as I find his name on the list here I believe he's there he is Curtis Jones Jr. is now not only a verbal commit but of course a signing for the Mountaineers as his letter of intent came in this morning and super excited to uh, see it and hear about it so let's move on now to the next player that came in this morning and that would be none other than another in-state recruit, actually. Funny enough, following up back-to-back uh, -back in-state recruits coming in this morning with their letters of intent. The next one being Keyshawn Robinson, the uh, wide receiver. I think he's actually an athlete. They may use him in the defensive backfield. I'm not 100% sure, certain, uh, but they're coming from Jefferson High School in West Virginia. Signed his letter of intent to join the Mountaineers. And, of course, Neil Brown provided his thoughts on that as well. So let me pull up uh, that here and we'll share Neil Brown's thoughts on the addition of Keyshawn Robinson to the West Virginia roster for 2024 as well. Only fitting that I'm staying right in front of our home sign in our offices right here at Milan Pushkar Stadium because Keyshawn Robinson from Jefferson High School played for Craig Hunter in high school, one of the best athletes in our home state. He was an all-state defensive back and an all-state receiver, also multiple state champion in track and field. Welcome, Keyshawn Robinson. So you love to hear it. And as I said, their experience on both sides of the ball, and you love to hear about the track and field as well. That shows he's bringing speed to the game as well. So another good in-state recruit addition for West Virginia. Let me see if I can pull up his ratings here now on the uh, 247 Sports site, and we will uh, share those now. And then I'll add him to the signings list as well. Let's pull up his ratings here. Keyshawn Robinson, the 5'11", 175-pound receiver, the in-state player there, number two rated recruit in the state of West Virginia. So, you know, everything I said previously about Curtis Jones holds true, locking down the top in-state talent. Yet again, it's Neil Brown on this coaching staff. Top 130 wide receiver in the country with a rating of 87 there on the three-star rating there on 247 Sports. There we are on that one. And then uh, give me just a second here, and I will pull up the um, signings list, if I can, here. There we are. And now we can add Keyshawn Robinson, who was actually one of the first verbal commits of this class. I remember uh, reporting on that one when it came in. And now we get to officially add him to the signings list with his letter of intent coming in earlier this morning. So hold on one brief second. I'm going to take a swig of my coffee, and then I'm going to catch up on some of your all's comments real quick, and then we'll try and catch back up to where we are now in the uh, process here. Like I said, way behind. Obviously, they've already had, I think, 16 letters of intent come in, maybe more, but uh, trying to catch up here. Appreciate all you guys hopping in here. Uh, live with me and like I said if you are in here live or even if you're watching this after the fact on a playback hit that like button it helps a ton and uh, be sure to subscribe to us here if you haven't already uh, Liam Wright appreciate you man tuning in and chiming in read my mind from a little bit of a comment I had earlier I think that uh I would be surprised at this point if it didn't happen. I'm not, you know, predicting either way. But also, you know, I want to provide the caveat. You know, he's already flipped once, right? He was committed to, you know, that other school and then uh, flipped to UCF. And so I think it's possible. I've heard good things. Um, 
you know, I don't particularly have any sources, but from the people that I do know that do know a little something about it, it seems very likely that he could wind up a mountaineer by the time the day sun, day is done. And I'm hoping that it happens while I'm live here. So I get a chance to uh, instantly react to it with you guys, you know, be excited about it here and uh, report on it live. But I uh, appreciate that question, Liam. And uh, I want to add that if West Virginia does indeed flip uh, Day Day Farmer from UCF, that this will be, you know, big. It's a big time wide receiver. You know, you look at guys that came in this year and played Traylon Ray and Rodney Gallagher is true freshman. He certainly has those capabilities as well and would immediately, you know, compete for a spot on that, you know, starting wide receiving core. Coming in as a true freshman, his route running is, you know, super polished for someone that young. And I think that it's going to lead to him, you know, getting on the field pretty quickly potentially. So uh, we'll see what happens there. I uh, appreciate you, Robert Gurney, watching from Thousand Oaks, California. Hey, that's what's up, man, out there on the West Coast. Appreciate you uh, repping the Mountaineers there on the other side. You know, that's what I always like to say is trying to grow the West Virginia brand bigger and better. So uh, just trying to reach more. Hope you're subscribed, man. Trying to bring you some more Mountaineer sports content from the East Coast to the West Coast. Uh, Timmy Green says he believes this young man is going to be a stud. I, I'm not sure which one you're talking about, Timmy, but I'm pretty excited about most of this class. So I, I'm going to say I agree with you uh, regardless. Uh, it's far we're going to sign with us uh, right now. The class is rated 53. Um, I think, you know, wait and see, wait and see G smart. I've got a good feeling about it, but you never know. Some surprise surprises always happen on signing day, right? Sometimes uh, positively, sometimes negatively. So, uh, and Timmy says he absolutely loves the in-state recruits. This is great. I agree. I agree. I'm hoping for good news on Dom Collins later, man. Uh, I really am excited about that guy. I think that he could be a big time player in the future and, I think something that he could bring to the game as well is a uh, kick returning ability. Uh, you know, West Virginia struggled in that aspect and he really, you know, did a great job of it for Princeton this year and was, you know, one of the more explosive players that I've seen, you know, personally around this area in quite some time. Cause you know, I'm from Mercer County as well. went to, you know, the rival high school in Bluefield. So I think that he's a very exciting player with a lot of potential. So be another good in-state recruit to add there. What's going on, Luke? Appreciate you uh, tuning in and chiming in, man. Just trying to catch up on these, a letter of intents that have came in, and I want to encourage you guys continue, you know, drop your thoughts there. I'll try and catch up on the comments here again in a second, but let's roll back through here, try and catch up to where the letter of intents are at now. I think we've got, what, four or five down, so still, you know, ten at least uh, to run through here, so let's hop back on this now. And the next letter of intent that came in this morning was from the defensive lineman, Nate Gabriel, there out of the state of Florida, Auburndale High School, officially joining the class. And, of course, we've got to hear Neil Brown's uh, thoughts on the addition of Nate Gabriel to the class as well. Pretty good defensive lineman that I think could play a part in the future for the Mountaineers, certainly. And uh, let's hear Coach Brown's thoughts on the subject, though. Mountaineer Nation, welcome Nate Gabriel from the same high school that brought us Aubrey Burks. Nate, big defensive lineman, state champion wrestler, heavyweight wrestler. The last heavyweight champion we had worked out pretty well in Zach Frazier. Nate's going to play on the other side of the ball, defensive line, big, strong guy. He'll be able to make immediate impact for us. Mountaineer Nation. So there you have it, the coach's thoughts, some positive praise there. For Nate Gabriel on the defensive line, and as he did say, you know, the wrestlers usually do pr work out pretty well, especially in the trenches with the, you know, good leverage that they have and everything from wrestling. So uh, with that being said, let's see if I can pull up his ratings here. We'll share his 247 ratings before we add him to the signings list here. As you see, six foot three, 285 pound defensive lineman from the state of Florida. One of the first letters of intent to come in from Florida. West Virginia is still doing a good job recruiting that state. It's been very successful for them in the past. And you know, a ton of talent comes out of the state of Florida. So, you know, despite the lower, what appears to be lower ratings here, we got to remember how successful Florida is. So being, you know, a top 200 recruit in the state of Florida is nothing to, you know, laugh at there. 85 rating, three-star recruit, 152nd defensive lineman in the country. Like I said, top 160 player in the state of Florida. And I think he's going to be a good addition for the future of the Mountaineer football as they've done a good job building the trenches. That's one thing this staff has done a good job of, offensive line and defensive line. And they add another piece to the future. It's great size coming in as a freshman there with the 6'3", 285-pound frame. 
So now that we've taken a look at the ratings and heard some of the coaches' thoughts, let's add him to the signings list here as we continue to roll through the letter of intents that have come in. This morning for the Mountaineers, we can now add Nate Gabriel, the Florida recruit, to the signings list, move him from a verbal commitment to a signing now as West Virginia has officially received his letter of intent. And now we see we are now up to, what, five? And so we still have at least, I think, 11 to roll through. I think there's been 16 come in up to this point. So let's continue moving on here. And next up, I believe that we do have Jason Cross, a defensive back that I'm really excited about. Highly sought after safety from the state of Pittsburgh. I mean, from the state of Pennsylvania there, I believe. Excuse me. Um, but as you see the announcement there of his letter of intent coming in this morning, coming from Bishop Cavanaugh High School there in Pittsburgh. So uh, very excited about his addition as well to this Mountaineer football team. And let's hear Coach Brown's thoughts on his addition to this class as well. If I can uh, get that pulled up here. Jason Cross, a safety, making the trip south on I-79 from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, straight from the Whippeal, three straight playoff appearances. Basketball player also. Can't wait to get him here and get him added to our secondary. So Neil Brown kind of echoing what I said there about the addition in the secondary being one that we should be excited about, I think, as Mountaineer fans, a highly regarded safety but uh, let's let uh, 247 Sports here share a little bit of their ratings and so we can see just how highly regarded indeed that he was as we look here. Love the length there. Six foot two, 165 pounds. From Pittsburgh, 88 rating, three-star recruit, top 10 player in the state of Pennsylvania there, number nine ranked player overall there in the state. So like I said, very good recruit here despite the three-star rating. I know some people try and look at stars and judge it by that, but I think really I like to look at the ratings within their position, ratings within the state, and I think a lot of times West Virginia does a good job really recruiting some highly regarded players that maybe fly under the radar a little bit because they don't have that fourth star, but they're very high-end three-star players. That's been the case you know, throughout this staff's tenure, they've done a good job in recruiting, and I think they've really done it yet again with this class, and Jason Cross is going to be a good piece. As you see, they're top 60 safety in the entire country, actually. So with that, we can now add him to the signings list for the Mountaineers. So let's go ahead and do that now as well. As we will add defensive back Jason Cross from a verbal commit to a signing. Six foot, 270 pounder there from the state of Pennsylvania. And we can now move on to the next letter of intent that came in for the Mountaineers. And coincidentally enough, it was also in the defensive backfield. So let's look at this one here that came in from Keon, Washington there, St. Charles High School in Waldorf, Maryland. Another addition from the state of Maryland. West Virginia doing a good job recruiting those borderline states. I've talked about that in the recruiting updates here throughout the recruiting season on the CRW, and you see that yet again with the addition of Keon Washington to the defensive backfield for the Mountaineers out of the state of Maryland. Let's hear Coach Brown's thoughts on the addition of Keon Washington now, just as we have for the other letter of intents that have come in for the Mountaineers this morning already. Pull this up here and share that with you guys. Keon Washington from St. Charles High School in Maryland. He did it all there. He played defensive back. He played receiver. They handed him the ball. He returned kicks. He came to camp this summer and earned a scholarship offer. We were really impressed what we saw in person, and he only continued to add to that in his senior season. Can't wait to coach Keon Washington. Keon so Yet again, high praise from Coach Brown from a guy that sounds like he could play many aspects of the game. He may be able to factor in early in his career due to his ability to play on special teams. You know, maybe not even as a return man, maybe as a gunner, something like that. West Virginia is going to need some of that. You know, they struggled in kick coverage. That's an area they're looking to improve, really looking to improve, you know, special teams coverage in general. So maybe he plays a role there, but I'm excited about his addition. A lengthy defensive back is something that you always like to see. So let's take a look at his ratings here from 247 Sports. 6'1", 175 pounder out of the state of Maryland. Like I said, love the ranginess there. Top 30 player in the state of Maryland, which produces some really good football players, number 28 overall, and a top 75 cornerback nationally, so that's a good addition for West Virginia there as well. 87 rating from 247 Sports to come out with his three-star overall rating there. So we've seen his ratings. Now let's go ahead and add him 
to the signings list for the Mountaineers now, moving them from a verbal commit up to a signing, as we can do with uh, several of these now, trying to catch up here. Like I said, didn't get to do this as early as I'd originally planned. Had a few things go on, so we pushed back to an 11.30 start, but that's okay because now we've got most of these already in, and maybe we'll have you know some surprises pop up here while we're live that we'll get to talk about and chat about together. So let's move on here to the next one that came up, though, for the Mountaineers this morning, and I believe that was on the offensive line, and yes, it was, actually. Justin Terry here, let's take a look at his announcement, came through here on the WVU Football social media page. As you can see here, Offensive lineman out of Picker, Pickerington, Ohio, Pickering Central High School, joins the Mountaineers, and now we got to hear Neil Brown's thoughts on this addition to the offensive line, an area that they've done such a good job of building since taking over when it was such a weakness in 2019, now the complete strength of the program. So glad to see them continuing to target additions that are going to help them make a difference in the trenches there as they've done throughout this season to lead to the success that we had here in 2023. So let's hear Neil Brown's thoughts on the addition. Big addition in our offensive line room for Coach Matt Moore in 6'6", over 300 pounds, Justin Terry from Pickerton Central High School in Pickerton, Ohio, a guy that moves extremely well and is going to pave the way for our running backs and protect our quarterbacks in the future. So, man, you got to love the size there for a true freshman. Six foot six, 300 plus pounds already coming in. So, that bodes well for the future of the West Virginia offensive line. Like I said, they're continuing, you know, to just build it to where it's going to be plug and play there on the offensive line moving forward. Hopefully, that's how it's looking, anyways. But let's look at some of his ratings here from 247 Sports. As you can see, top 50 player in the state of Ohio, number 45 overall, top 100 nearly a top 100 over offensive tackle in the entire country, 108 overall, 86 rating, three-star recruit. You see a lot of these three stars that West Virginia's pulling in have 85-plus ratings. So, you know, that goes back to what I was talking about there before. But really excited about his addition with the 6'6 frame, 300-plus Browns coming in as a true freshman. So we can now add him to the signing list for the Mountaineers as well. Let's go ahead and pull that up here. And we will add his name there as well. Coming out of Ohio, so yet again, you know, the Mountaineers continuing to recruit those borderline states, as I've talked about, you know, throughout this recruiting cycle, something I love, not only locking down the in-state, but doing a good job recruiting the borderline states as well, and that holds true with Justin Terry. So he was an addition this morning, and then West Virginia continuing with the offensive additions with this next one, and it's one that I'm excited about, especially after the season that Cole Taylor just had, right? You like the future of the tight end position at West Virginia and how it's looking. So how about in another addition to help there with a true freshman in Jack Samarco out of Anderson High School in Cincinnati, Ohio. Six foot six yet again as a true freshman coming in. And I'm really excited about his addition. But enough about my thoughts. Let's hear Coach Brown's thoughts. That's who we really want to hear in regards to Jack Samarco here. So let me pull that up and we'll hear Coach Brown's thoughts on this addition to the West Virginia class here of 2024. Tight end, Jack Samarco, Anderson High School, Cincinnati, Ohio. He can run block. He can catch the ball down the field. He's going to be a great addition to our tight end room. Run block and catch the ball down the field. Those are the two things that I'm really hoping to see in a tight end addition. So I'm excited about Jack Samarco, especially, like I said, you've seen Cole Taylor, a guy with a similar frame, have a lot of success this season. Uh, so West Virginia looks like they're going to continue to make the tight end a weapon, and hopefully Jack Smarco can be a weapon as we look at his ratings here on 247. Like we said, 6'6", 235, great size coming in as a true freshman. Another one out of the state of Ohio. 84 rating for his three-star recruit status. 64th player in Ohio, so top 65 player in the state there. Top 100 tight end nationally, rated as the number 92nd tight end in the country there by 247 Sports. So we've seen him. We've heard a little bit about his ratings. Let's add him to the signings list now for the Mountaineers as we build this class here on the Country Roads webcast. Try and catch up with these letter of intents that have come in. I believe he yep, was one of the very early uh, verbal commits for the Mountaineers that we had a chance to report on here. So easy to find his name there on that list and move him up to the signings list now. As we now are at, what are we at here? Eight, I believe. Yeah, eight already. So at least eight more to go. I think we're up to at least 16 letter of intents that have come in. So 
we can roll on now to the very next addition for the Mountaineers, which is an addition to the defensive back room. Familiar name, yes, but it is not the son of Chris Henry. Uh, he's actually a recruit in the 2025 class, and I believe he's committed to Ohio State already, unfortunately, but he's a very big-time recruit that's going to have a very successful career. But – Having said that, West Virginia does add a player named Chris Henry in this 2024 class here with another addition to the defensive back room. We knew it was going to be heavy influence on the defensive back additions in this class. That continues with another good one here in Chris Henry, another recruit out of the state of Florida. So let's hear Neil Brown's thoughts now on the addition of Chris Henry to this class for the Mountaineers here in this 2024 uh, recruiting cycle. If I can uh, pull up the video correctly, yeah, that is. Try this again. Chris Henry, defensive back from Donnellan, Florida, played for Coach Tommy Sutton at Donnellan High School. Coach Sutton's got ties to right here in West Virginia. Can't wait to have an opportunity to work with Chris. Great defensive back, also dangerous returner. So that last part interests me, dangerous returner. You know, talked about that earlier with some other recruits we were talking about, uh, you know, maybe having a chance to get into the mix because West Virginia needs some help on special teams. So maybe that could be, you know, his window into some early playing time would be could be as a return man. Let's take a look at his ratings here on 247. Six foot, 185 pounds, you know, good size. They're coming in pretty, you know, strong there with 185 pound frame as a true freshman out of the state of Florida. 85 rated recruit there by 247, three star rating, 208th player in the state of Florida. Like I said, you know, with these Florida recruits, Florida's just so heavy. So, you know, don't be discouraged by the low rating when it comes to a recruit in the state of Florida. There's a lot of recruits in that state that fly under the radar, and West Virginia's found plenty of them before, and particularly in the defensive backfield, which is where. Chris Henry will be joining the Mountaineers as uh, top 170 safety in the country. They're rated 169th. So now we can add him here to the signings list as well. So let's go ahead and pull that back up here and switch him from a verbal commit to now a signing for the Mountaineers here as he joins this class with his letter of intent coming in earlier today as well. Go ahead and put him up here below Jack Samarco and – Continue to move on here as we see the names that have signed, and we still have these verbal commits, which several of these have signed as well. Let's catch up on some of those now as we continue to roll through this. Encourage you guys, drop your thoughts there in the chat. I'll catch up on those here momentarily in just a second as we get caught up on some of these letter of intents that have came in uh, first, but I will uh, catch up on some of your all's uh, comments here in a bit. Uh, next up, though, we have Zay Jennings, another defensive back addition, an athlete, you know, could have played receiver, could have played defensive back. I believe West Virginia is going to use him on the defensive side of the football there out of Winton Woods High School in Cincinnati, Ohio. Another good addition here, I think, for this class. And let's hear Neil Brown's thoughts on yet another addition to the defensive back room. Like we said, heavy targets there, you know, both in the portal and here in the high school recruits and West Virginia is adding, you know, both of those. And here's another addition via the high school ranks in Zay Jennings. So let's hear uh, Neil Brown's thoughts as I pull up the video here. Welcome to Zay Jennings from Winton Woods High School in Cincinnati, Ohio, the same high school that David Long Jr. played at. He will be the next great defensive player from Cincinnati that represents the Mountaineers. Hey, you love the closing there. He said he will be the next great defensive player from Cincinnati that plays for West Virginia. So, obviously, high praise there from the West Virginia head man. Let's look at some of his ratings here on 247 Sports, and we can probably see why. Six foot two, 187 pounds. So, talk about length there in the defensive backfield. You love that, especially if he's going to play the corner spot. Having a six foot two corner, that's a great advantage for West Virginia, especially as some of the big receivers that we seem to face a lot in this conference. So, I'm really excited about that. And then you look at the rating as well and that will excite you also 86 overall three-star rating top 40 recruit in the state of ohio so that's very good number 38 overall and nearly a top 100 athlete in the entire country rated as the 105th athlete overall in the nation so that's a good addition for the west virginia defensive back room and we can add him now to the signings list for the mountaineers as we pull that back up here switch him from a verbal commitment to now a signing as well Coming from the state of Ohio, we had another recruit from a borderline state here. So that's good news for West Virginia there as well. And we can move on to the next one now as we're continuing to roll through the letter of intents in chronological order as they came through this morning for West Virginia here. And next up was, I do believe, another player on the 
offensive side this time that I'm very excited about and uh, one of the higher rated additions in this class actually or at least was at one point I don't know how much the ratings have changed since the last time I've had to take a look at it but we're talking about Brandon Raymond the wide receiver from St. Joe's Prep there in Philadelphia Pennsylvania I think he's going to be a strong wide receiver in the future for West Virginia you know we've talked about several wide receivers in this class and I think West Virginia really has a bright future at that position when you look at the freshmen that played this season and some of the freshmen that they're adding here in this class as well. And Brandon Raymond, certainly a really good one West Virginia is adding. Let's hear Coach Brown's thoughts on his addition to this class now as well. Pull that up here for you guys. One of the top wideouts in the entire country. Play for Coach Tim Roken at St. Joe's Prep in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Not a one, not a two, but a three-time state champion in high school. Can't wait for Coach Bilal Marshall to get to work with Brandon Raymond. One of the three-time state champion. That's impressive there. Coach Brown sharing his thoughts on a great addition to the West Virginia wide receiver room. Let's take a look at his ratings there over here on 247. Six foot, 180 pounds, so pretty good size there. Probably could play outside or inside, either one. Top player in the state of Pennsylvania, though. Top 25, to be exact. Number 22 there in the state of Pennsylvania, a state that produces some good football, some good football players, excuse me. Top 130 wide receiver in the country, 128th nationally. 87 rating there, three-star recruit is Brandon Raymond. So we've seen a little bit of his ratings and wide receiver addition that I'm pretty excited about. Let's add him now to our signings list as we continue to track these letter of intents that have come in for the Mountaineers here today. Throughout this morning, they've had a ton come in fast and heavy since, you know, about 7.30, I think, was when the first one rolled in on that we've reported. But Brandon Raymond now joins the class here for the Mountaineers and a really good addition to this class at that. So let's see who we got next coming up here that came in this morning. I believe we're flipping over to the other side of the football. And, indeed, we are, and it's another player in the trenches, though. Loving how they're working in the trenches to continue to, you know, maintain that. It's been successful for West Virginia this season. Hopefully it continues to be in the future. And if so, Elijah Kinsler may be a reason why. Coming from Burgeon Catholic High School there in Ordell, New Jersey. Another addition to this class. He signed his letter of intent to the, join the Mountaineers earlier this morning as well. And so now we can hear Neil Brown's thoughts on his addition to this class as soon as I can get that pulled up for you guys also. And we will listen to the head man of the Mountaineers. Hear another thought, gate, or excuse me, provide his thoughts on another addition to the defensive line there for West Virginia. From the state of New Jersey, from one of the top high school programs in the country in Bergen Catholic, Elijah Kinsler, defensive lineman. Great job by Coach Jackson going to get in the first team all state defensive lineman, a state champion at Bergen Catholic. Cannot wait to get Elijah here in January and go to work. Another state champion, and interestingly enough, says in January, so we're talking about an early enrollee here for Elijah Kinsler that will be here for spring football practice with West Virginia. So that's exciting as well. Um, Neil Brown there, you know, providing that and shouting out Coach Jackson. Let's take a look at Elijah Kinsler's ratings here. Good size coming in at 260 already. Six foot three, great frame there for the uh, true freshman out of the state of New Jersey. They'll be enrolling early, as we've learned there. And a top 25 player out of the state of New Jersey, uh, number 23 overall and a top, 100, a top 150 defensive lineman in the country with the 149th rating. 85 overall on 247 with the three-star rating. Let's add him now to the transfer in, not transfer in list. Still got my mind on the transfer portal, guys. West Virginia's had so much activity there. But uh, we're talking high school recruits here for signing day. And we have another one to add to our signings list for West Virginia now with the addition of Elijah Kinsler. You see almost all the verbal commits now. We're getting to the point where they're coming in as signings. And uh, maybe we'll have a couple other surprises pop up on here that hadn't already verbally committed. But now we have Elijah Kinsler. And uh, what's that put us up to now? What is that? Double digits, right? 13. So almost all called up now. So let's take a breather here. Let's uh, step back, take a breath, you know, I'll gain our breath here. I'm going to take a swig of my coffee and uh, catch up on your all's comments. And then we'll uh, see where we are. I know we got at least three more to uh, go through and then maybe some more have come in in the meantime. So take a swig of this coffee and catch up on some of your all's comments.
John Water says, can't wait to see this class coming together. Think it's going to be big along with the transfers. I do too, man. Done a great job this offseason, and uh, I think it's really going to pay off next year. I'm excited. You know, it's going to be a lot of uh, buildup heading into next season. I think it's going to be the most anticipated WVU football season in, what, five, six years at least probably. So it's going to be fun, and I think if we can get a bowl game win, we could end in the top 25, and, you know, that's probably going to carry us into maybe a potential preseason rating in the top 25 next year as well with, you know, some of the pieces we're adding today and, you know, some of the transfers we've already added. So I uh, appreciate that as well. Farmer is here 30 seconds ago on X. We just stole Day Day Farmer. Oh, my goodness, guys. Ooh, all right, well, we got to catch up on these on these other letters of intent so I can get to it, guys. Um, I'll catch up on your all's comments here momentarily. We gotta we gotta get through these. I want to get to talking about Day Day Farmer uh, here in a minute. So let's catch back up here. We got at least what three or four more to roll through here, and then hopefully we'll be at the Day Day Farmer period. But West Virginia just stole Day Day Farmer, according to uh, the chat here. I know you guys wouldn't lie to me. I see it coming in from several people. So super excited, guys, and we're gonna get to it uh, momentarily. You see the smile on my face. I'm ear to ear on that one. It's a big, big, big pickup for West Virginia in this class at the wide receiver position. So. Let's move on now. Uh, next addition here that came in, letter of intent wise, is another skill player. You know, we mentioned Day Day Farmer there, but we're still talking about the ones that came in earlier. And it is a player at the skill position for West Virginia. In Dior Hubbard, another running back that I think Chad Scott, this coaching staff, has done a great job finding some under running backs that have been under recruited that have really been special, especially the past two seasons. When you look at back to back breakout freshmen, CJ Donaldson. Then Jaheim White, and um, let's not forget about a little name of DJ Oliver, who I think you guys will be impressed with in the bowl game and who's going to play a part next season. Continuing to find good freshman running backs, I think Dior Hubbard will be another one that West Virginia fans will be impressed with. Um, great running, you know, explosive. Also, I think can, you know, catch the ball, has good hands out of the backfield. But enough on my thoughts. Let's hear Coach Brown share his thoughts on another great addition to the West Virginia backfield, which, you know, we're going to need moving forward where, you know, we've lost Justin Johnson already, you know, who knows how many we're going to have there at that position, you know, we're going to have what three, four. So he has a, a chance to maybe earn some, you know, early playing time or something. We'll see what we've seen West Virginia split up carries, but another talented back that we can certainly be excited about, but let's hear Neil Brown's thoughts on the addition here. Um, excuse me, push the wrong button there. Let's try that again. And the next big league back and latest addition to Coach Chad Scott's running back room is Dior Hubbard from Gahanna, Ohio. Played at Gahanna Lincoln High School for Coach Ward. This guy was a Mr. Football finalist in the state of Ohio, all Metro uh, two times, all state in Ohio two times, and the Metro Columbus Player of the Year. This guy comes with a lot of accolades. He's going to tote the rock right here at West Virginia. The next. There you hear it, the next big league back in line, as Coach Chad Scott likes to call him, one of our favorite assistant coaches. Big fan of Cho Coach Scott and the um, backs that he's been able to find, and I think he's found another really good one in Dior Hubbard, who I think could be explosive in the future. You heard of some of the accolades. Neil Brown ran down there, 5'10", 185-pounder from the state of Ohio. You see a top 40 player in the state of Ohio, number 33 overall, top 70 running back nationally, number 64 overall, 87 rating there, three-star recruit. But like I said, let's don't let that fool us. You know, who else was three-star recruit? C.J. Donaldson, Jaheim White, D.J. Oliver, all these running backs that we found have been under-recruited and undervalued. And I think Dior Hubbard's another addition that will probably wind up the same way. So let's add him now to the signings list for the Mountaineers. We continue to try and catch up on these letter of intents that have come in for West Virginia this morning, and we can now add running back Dior Hubbard in as a signing for the Mountaineers, as his letter of intent did indeed come in earlier today, another addition from the state of Ohio. And let's continue to roll through here and try and catch up and get back um, to where we are running with this thing live. But the next addition would be someone that could be, you know, filling or making holes, excuse me, for Dior Hubbard, who's going to be, you know, filling them exploding out there out of the backfield. And that, of course, will be Lucas Austin, an offensive line addition for the Mountaineers, one of the latest or uh, very last, I guess, verbal commits that West Virginia had. You know, just came in in recent days. I did a video on Lucas Austin out of Sterling High School there in Illinois. So excited about that addition. And we can hear uh, Neil Brown's thoughts on this pickup there and another addition in the trenches. Uh, for the Mountaineers here also. Luke Austin from Sterling, Illinois. He's an offensive lineman, 6'4", 
Six six, going to be a tackle when he gets here. Extremely excited about him. He's a basketball player. Can't wait to get him here and get him in our program. Luke Austin from. So that's one of the things I talked about in the video that I did when we covered his verbal commitment that I was excited about was being a basketball player as an offensive lineman has worked out in the past for you know uh, tackles that West Virginia's brought in. I think um, you know Yadni just comes to mind among others, and so I think he's athletic enough that he could be a good tackle in the future for the Mountaineers. Let's look at some of his ratings here on 247, 6'7, 265. So you love that size, six foot seven coming in automatically. One of the top players in the entire state of Illinois, guys. Number 12 overall, nearly a top 10 player in that state. And you look at the rating there, a top 40 offensive tackle in the entire country. So despite the fact that it was a late verbal commitment, it's one of the higher rated players in this class with his 89 overall rating with his three-star recruit status there for the Mountaineers. But we can now change him from a verbal commitment to a signing. So let's pull that up here as we continue to grow this signings list for the Mountaineers here on the Country Roads webcast. Like I said, he was the latest verbal commitment, but he wasn't the latest uh, signing, you know, coming in earlier today. So we'll add him in there, and we will continue to roll on here on the letter of intents that have come in for West Virginia if we can. Load this back up here. I got to – reload the page to get us uh, back called up and it looks like we've had several come in actually and including uh, a couple that I talked about earlier man I'm even more excited we were talking about Day Day Farmer and we were also talking about Dom Collins and it looks like both of those have come in since we're live here so got to catch up here guys got to catch up but uh, before we get to some of those receivers that have come in recently that we're really excited about how about a signal caller you know we needed to add one in this class as we only had you know a couple scholarship quarterbacks really here this year with uh, Nico, Garrett Green, and, of course, Sean Boyd. Now we've added another one to the roster, and I think he's one that's going to be really exciting down the line for West Virginia, and that's Khalil Wilkins there from Washington, D.C., left-handed quarterback that I think is going to be fun to watch in the future. So excited about his addition, but let's hear Neil Brown's thoughts on the West Virginia signal caller that they've added in this class once I reload that page as well and we can uh, pull up that video and – talk a little bit about uh, Khalil Wilkins here, see if I can uh, share Neil Brown's thoughts on the West Virginia quarterback addition here to the 2024 class. From the DMV, one of the top dual threat quarterbacks in the entire country, Khalil Wilkins. Khalil came to our seven-on-seven -seven tournament this summer and absolutely lit it up. He's a guy that can run. He can pass. He's extremely intelligent. And he's got great leadership skills. Can't wait to coach Khalil right here at West Virginia. I see what you did there, Neil. You guys noticed that he had the uh, Pat White uh, thing on the wall behind him there as he's talking about one of the top dual threats in the quarterback, dual, top dual threat quarterbacks in the country. I see what you did there, Neil. <laughs> I like it. That's sly. That's sly, Neil. You sly dog. Uh, Khalil Wilkins here, six foot three, so great size coming in, 190 pounds. Obviously, we'll get him up over 200 probably before we, you know, start seeing extensive playing time. But coming out of the DMV, there, as Neil Brown mentioned, out of the state of Maryland, West Virginia continues to do a good job recruiting those borderline states. And I think he's going to be a good quarterback for the Mountaineers, guys. 86 overall rating, three star recruit, top 30 player in the state of Maryland, top 65 quarterback nationally, number 63 overall, as Neil Brown mentioned, one of the top dual threat quarterbacks in the entire country. And West Virginia. Virginia adds him here, so that means that we can add him here on the Country Roads webcast to the signings list as West Virginia continues to build this class today, and it's one that is really shaping up to be a very good one. Uh, Khalil Wilkins here joins the class now to push our signing list yet again further in another addition from a borderline state there in Maryland. And then next up here, guys, this one, man, I'm, I'm super excited about. Um, you guys know I pushed it here on the channel. I guess it was about a month ago now. Um, his brother I'm, you know, friends with, he reached out to me. You know, they were really wondering, you know, and surprised as I was that he hadn't got an offer from WVU yet or some other D1 programs hadn't really looked at him. So, you know, I told him I'd share his highlights here on a live stream. I'd done it in the past. was really just had my fingers crossed that an offer from West Virginia would come. But I was just hoping he would land at a D1 program regardless, to be honest with you, because I think this kid's super talented. Like I've talked about it earlier, I'm here in Mercer County, and I think he's one of the more talented players I've seen here. Come out of Mercer County. Guys, this guy clocked a sub 4-3, 40-yard dash at West Virginia's camp. I believe it was a 4-2-9 that we're talking about. He was a great kick returner. I watched him play in the state you know, playoffs this year. Um, he led Princeton to the first-ever state title game. And in the semifinals, to get them to that state title game, nine catches, 330 yards, and four touchdowns. 
also had a kick return touchdown in the game, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, had some rushing yards as well. So he's a guy that's explosive, man. Don't let him be an in-state recruit from down here in Mercer County for you. This guy's going to be a player, and I'm talking about Dominic Collins. Got his letter of intent to come in. Just briefly there, like I said, Princeton High School here in Princeton, West Virginia. Same county as me in Mercer County. I'm from the rival high school there in Bluefield. You know, shout out, you know, Sean Martin, who graduated from there. And super exciting being someone from this area because there's not a lot of Division One players that have come out of Mercer County traditionally. And especially now that we're going to get two scholarship players from, you know, WVU on this roster together. I'm very excited about that, you know, from one from Princeton, one from Bluefield. So, you know, both those are going to be, you know, Sean Martin, Dom Collins on the roster together. I believe, you know, Grant Cochran, a quarterback from Princeton's on the roster as a preferred walk on as well. So glad to see Neil Brown, you know, lock down these in-state players. And this is one, you know, I'm super excited about. Uh, so very personally excited about this one very much so, but I'm excited to hear Neil Brown's thoughts on it. Like I said, haven't heard this yet. So instant reaction on all of these guys, this is real time stuff. Me reacting to, these additions from here on out, I hadn't seen these ones come through till right now. So I'm reacting with them, you know, live with you guys. So let's hear Neil Brown's thoughts, though, on the addition of Dom Collins. Dom Collins staying home right here at West Virginia. Princeton high product. Got a chance to watch him play in the state championship game. This guy went for a thousand yards, not only his senior year, but also his junior year. Also can return kicks. Look forward to watching him play right here at home. Dom. So as I said there, guys, super excited about his addition to this class. And I've got to try and uh, see if I can pull him up here on 247 because he's not on the uh, class yet because he hadn't – he was one of those that hadn't uh, verbally committed yet. So we'll have to add him to the signings list as well. But I'm, it's an addition that I'm super excited to make as I talked about there, you guys. I don't think he has any ratings yet on 247 Sports, but I'll share his profile with you guys. And like I said, not surprised there. We don't get a ton of attention here in Mercer County, but I'm telling you, I think he can be special, guys. We've seen these in-state players, you know, Hudson Clement, Preston Fox, those guys in the past. Now they're starters for the Mountaineers. I think Dom Collins could fall in line right with those guys. And I think it shows how highly regarded he is as well because you look at, you know, Hudson Clement and Preston Fox and, you know, Judah Price and not a knock on those guys by any means. I think that they're all really great players with great potential, but they were – had to begin their careers as preferred walk-ons, whereas Dom Collins here was getting a scholarship. And I think a window for early playing time, I mentioned it earlier, I would not be surprised to see him, you know, factor in as a return man. You know, talking sub-4-3 speed was an excellent, you know, hell of a return man there for the Princeton Tigers, multiple runbacks. So would not be surprised to see him try and get some reps at kick returner for West Virginia next year there. As we share his profile on 247 Sports, so now we can add him to the signings list for the Mountaineers, but, you know, as I said, he wasn't previously verbally committed, so we don't get to do the copy and paste uh, job here. I get to actually type him in, and like I said, it's an addition that I am very excited to type in myself here, so I'll go ahead and add that in there with the, uh, what was it, 510, 160, I believe. I think I know that from my head, if I'm not mistaken, so 165. And, of course, another in-state recruit continuing to lock down the top players in the state, and Dom was actually named the top player in the state by Max Preps. I saw an article on that earlier today. So very excited about this addition for West Virginia. So Dom Collins joins the class there at the skill positions for West Virginia. And then very next up, we have another wide receiver addition that I'm probably going to be just as excited to talk and gush about, guys, here. And because it's the flip. It's the flip that we all were hoping would come today. It did indeed come. West Virginia pulls it off. The coup on signing day, they steal Day Day Farmer from UCF right out of their own backyard in Melbourne, Florida there, Melbourne Central Catholic. And, guys, this is a huge steal for West Virginia and a huge deal, as I can say those you know together there and rhyme them. Because Day Day Farmer, I talked about a little bit earlier, really polished route runner as a wide receiver, could potentially play right away despite you know West Virginia having some really talented young guys already in the mix. He's that good. Uh, one of the – additions that I think everyone is probably the most excited about in this class and was hoping to see today. Uh, West Virginia pulls it off. They add Day-Day Farmer. Still him away despite his previous verbal commitment to UCF. West Virginia pulls the coup on signing day. Shout out to this coaching staff for doing it. And having said that, let's hear Neil Brown's thoughts on the addition here of Day-Day Farmer. A late ad, a big flip right here on signing day from a guy that we've been recruiting for three-plus years, Day-Day Farmer. 
wide out from Melbourne, Florida, played for coach Nate Hooks at Melbourne Central Catholic, big-time playmaker. He's great with the ball in his hands, not only a wide out, but also a kickoff and punt return. Seems like that may have been a priority, you know, with this class for West Virginia is getting guys that not only can factor in at their positions but can help on special teams. Seems like I've mentioned it throughout here. We just talked about it with Dom, and yet again, same thing with Day-Day Farmer. But I think that he has a chance to factor in at the wide receiver position right away. West Virginia is going to find ways to get the ball in his hands. Um, you know, same with Dom Collins. I think Dom talked about in a previous interview they kind of thought they can use him in like a Rodney Gallagher type role with the way they used him this season. So I think West Virginia has the potential to be dangerous, guys. you got, you know, Day-Day Farmer, Rodney Gallagher, Dom Collins. That's so much speed that you're adding to go with, you know, Hudson Clement, Preston Fox, and Traylon Ray. Not to mention the transfer receiver West Virginia's added from Oklahoma State. This offense is going to be tough to stop next year with Jaheim White, Garrett Green, and uh, everyone else you can name as well. But looking at Day-Day Farmer's ratings here on 247, 511, 160, similar frame to the other receiver we just talked about, Dom Collins. Super excited about both of them. Day Day Farmer coming from Melbourne, Florida. Here, look at the rating, guys. This is why this is such a big flip. 90 rating, four star recruit, top 30 player in the state of Florida. And earlier in this, you know, video here, as we had this sign and day special, I'm talking about if you have, you know, top 150, top 200 rating in the state of Florida, you're a really good player because they produce some great players in the state of Florida. So imagine how good this guy is as a top 30 player in the state of Florida there. Top 40 wide receiver in the entire country. Awesome steal here. Just an amazing job by this coaching staff. Neil Brown said they recruited him for three plus years. You can tell it means a lot to him to get this flip and they really put the work in to be able to do it. And now we can add Day Day Farmer to the uh, signings list for West Virginia. Perhaps the biggest addition of this class. He's definitely up there for sure. So Let's go ahead and add him now to the signings list for the Mountaineers. Another one with no verbal commitment that I'm certainly more than happy to type in here. Uh, we'll go with – we'll just type Day-Day, man, because I don't feel like typing the whole Rick Darius name. So we'll just go with the nickname. You know, that's what everybody's going to know him as anyways. So we'll go ahead and throw that on here. And a big addition, a four-star recruit for this class. You love to see it for the Mountaineers here as we continue to build this signing list for West Virginia. All the way up, I think, what are we at now, 18 or 19 names? We'll count it here in a second. And I think we still have one more to go. Uh, and then we'll be all caught up live, and we can just uh, chat a little bit and see if anything else comes in along the way here. But let's see where we're at now. Quick count there, but I got 18. So sounds like that's seems like that's where we're at. Uh, few verbals that we haven't had come in yet. I don't think any one of these three have still come in. Um, Israel Boyce, Ricky Williams, or Abina Onwuka. Uh, being on Wuka, I think it's uh, announcing later in the day. That's one that I'm really excited about um, to come in as well. Maybe the one that I'm most excited about on the defensive side, as now both the ones I was really excited about on the offensive side have come in back-to-back. -back. And Dom Collins and Day-Day Farmer, personally, those are two of my favorites on the offensive side. But I think we have one more at least that has come in here. Let me refresh the page, make sure no more have come in since this one. And uh, we'll talk about it. If not, yep, one more, guys, and we will officially be all caught up and uh, be running this thing live now. And it's another addition to the running back room. We talked about West Virginia needing to add some running backs with, you know, Justin Johnson hitting the transfer portal and um, who knows what else may happen in the offseason there at that position. But West Virginia needing to add another running back in this class late. They find a way to do that. Another addition that hadn't previously been a verbal commit, but we knew West Virginia had a great chance to add, and that's Trayvon Dunbar out of the state of South Carolina there. Midland Valley High School, another running back joins the class, becomes the second running back in this class for West Virginia. And let's hear Neil Brown's thoughts on this addition here, the latest addition, the latest letter of intent, I guess, or most recent, I should say, at this point, the most recent letter of intent to come in for West Virginia. So let's hear Neil Brown's thoughts on this addition to the West Virginia running back room. Let's welcome Travion Dunbar from Aiken, South Carolina, running back. Over 4,600 yards rushing in his high school career and more than 60-plus touchdowns. He's the next big league back. Let's welcome Travion Dunbar from Aiken. go big league backs. I love the theme. I love the theme. Let me see if I can pull him up here, guys. On 247 Sports, we'll share his ratings as well, and then we can add him to the signings list, and we'll be all caught up, guys, and we'll uh, chat a little bit and uh, see if anything else comes down the line here. Uh, so uh didn't take us as long to catch up as I thought it would, and we had some good news come in along the way, didn't we? We get Don Collins, we get Day Day Farmer, we get Trayvon Dunbar, so uh, it's really exciting stuff here, guys, really exciting stuff here. And here we see Trayvon Dunbar on 247 Sports. 
bigger frame than Dior Hubbard. So, you know, a couple different running backs. I think West Virginia has kind of continued that theme in recent classes. You look last year, you get Jaheim White and DJ Oliver, who were kind of that similar, you know, one-two punch. And in this class, you do it again as well with Hubbard and Dunbar. Like I said, out of South Carolina there and a highly regarded prospect out of South Carolina, really highly rated addition here actually for the Mountaineers uh, in this class, one of the higher rated additions. It looks like going by score and state ranking there. Top 11 player in the state of South Carolina, 11th overall, and a top 55 running back in the country, guys. 53 overall, 88 rating, three-star recruit there. And we can now add him to the signings list. Let me share it with you guys here before I begin uh, typing. Like I said, it's another one that wasn't previously verbal committed, so I got to do the uh, legwork and uh, type in the name in. All this good stuff here. So bear with me as I do that. Don't get to do the copy and paste job on this one, but uh, try it again here. But I appreciate, you know, as I do this, I want to say I appreciate everybody that's in here live. Have a really good turnout for this one, better than I expected. And I appreciate everyone that's in here live, especially doing it, you know, early in the day. I didn't know if anyone would really pop in here, but you guys really have, you know, come out in droves. And I appreciate that a lot. And um, if you are in here live, just you know, do me a quick favor, hit the like button. I know it sounds crazy, but it really does help a ton. Uh, pushes this video out to more people, which really helps the channel grow and all those good things. And you know, if you are a WVU fan and you haven't already, be sure to subscribe here. Um, we're putting out a ton of Mountaineer sports content. We're covering, you know, roster movement, transfer portal stuff, recruiting, obviously, as you're seeing here. So I definitely think if you're a WVU fan, it's a great place to follow here. Uh, you know, obviously for these live streams as well, a great place to come and chat with other Mountaineer fans and just kind of a laid back environment and have a lot of fun here. I uh, forgot what state he was from there momentarily as I'm trying to do two things at once here. Obviously, I'm not the best at multitasking, but there we are. Trayvon Dunbar joins the class. 19th signing for the Mountaineers already today on National Signing Day. And I believe at this point we are all caught up. Let me refresh the WVU football social media, make sure we haven't had anything come in here in a few moments. And, oh, of course, of course one comes in. <laughs> so I'll get to y'all's comments momentarily. But, hey, good news, right? Good news. Good problem to have is that we continue to have uh, these commits come in for West Virginia. So awesome stuff, awesome stuff. Let's uh, see here if I can uh, pull this one up. And we did have another one come in, and it is uh, one that was previously committed for West Virginia, one of the verbal commits that we were talking about there that had not yet signed. So glad to see that happen as well. So let's see here if I can share the page. And then we should be all caught up finally. And that is Israel Boyce, another defensive back addition. We talked about, you know, heavy defensive back influence, needing that, you know, to target that position, not only in the transfer portal, but also, you know, here in the recruiting class in West Virginia, making several additions there to that defensive back room. And Israel Boyce, the most recent one there, coming from Douglas County High School in Douglasville, Georgia. So let's hear Neil Brown's thoughts now on this addition to the West Virginia defensive back room. Let's welcome Travion Dunbar from Aiken, South Carolina, running back. They might not have it up yet, actually. It may have literally just came in, guys. Let's see. Try and reload. Yeah, actually, they don't have Neil Brown's thoughts up yet. That was still the Trayvon Dunbar video. So might have to wait a minute here for uh, Neil Brown's thoughts on Israel Boyce, who just joined the class. But... What we can do in the meantime and in between time is I uh, can share his uh, ratings here on 247 Sports as soon as I find him here. There we are. Apologies for the snafu there, guys. Didn't realize they didn't have the video up yet. Didn't realize it was literally just seconds ago that his letter of intent came in. But I'm sure they'll have Neil Brown's video up on him here momentarily, and we can share that. But while we await that, we can talk about his ratings here on 247 5'11", 180-pound corner, like we mentioned, out of Douglasville, Georgia, Jacob Israel Boyce, 89-rated cornerback in the country. So you're talking about 100, a top 100 quarterback, a cornerback, excuse me, nationally, and a top 120 player in the state of Georgia. You know, I mentioned it for the state of Florida, holds true for the state of Georgia as well. If you're a top, you know, 150, top 200 player in either one of those states, you're a heck of a football player. So, you know, 86 rating. Three-star recruit here joins this class for West Virginia. See if Neil Brown's thoughts are up yet. If not, then we will go ahead and add him to the signings list. Uh, but looks like they do have it up. So now we can hear Neil Brown's thoughts on this addition to the West Virginia defensive back room before we add him to our signings list here on the Country Roads webcast. So let's do that here. 
Here's a real voice. Welcome to West Virginia. 5'11", 185-pound safety from Douglas County High School in Georgia. The next great player from the state of Georgia joins his teammate, Zach Keith, right here at West Virginia. Israel. Oh, nice. That's pretty cool. I didn't realize that uh, Zachariah Keith, uh, defensive end for West Virginia, was a former teammate. So they played together in the past and now uh, will be on the roster together yet again. So glad to see that and hear about it. That's pretty cool. A uh, little tidbit there. The Neil Brown drops in there. As West Virginia adds another addition from the state of Georgia. That's kind of what I've liked about this class, guys. You know, I talked about locking down the state, recruiting the borderline states, and then, you know, dip into Florida and Georgia, get some athletes out of there that we've had such success with in the past. And they did a good job of that with this class. I think yet again, doing all of those things, really. And so now we can add him to the signings list, and we see every verbal commitment West Virginia had has pretty much locked in now, save for Abina and Wuka and Ricky Williams. And, man, I'm really hoping to see a uh, commitment, a uh, letter of intent come in from Abina here at some point. I'm sure it is it's just a matter, of, a matter of time. He's been heavily active on Twitter, recruiting other guys, and really just repping West Virginia. So I don't think we have anything to worry about there. And I haven't heard anything, so it would be a huge shock if we did. But uh, for right now, what does that put us at? I think 20 or 21 at this point, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Let's run through real quick. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Yeah, 20. So that's 20. Uh, I think West Virginia you know, was trying to have, you know, around 21, 22. So uh, rolling right around where they wanted to be here, it looks like. So we're just awaiting to see – if we get anything on Abina Unwuka or Ricky Williams, because we've had the uh, surprises come through. We got the signing of Dom Collins, Day Day Farmer, and Trayvon Dunbar. Really excited about uh, Day Day Farmer and Dom Collins in this class, and really excited about some of the additions on the other side. And one of those will be Obina when his uh, letter of intent comes in. So we'll continue to await that here. I'll continue to refresh the page momentarily, make sure it hasn't come through. In the meantime here, and um, I guess I, we'll catch us up, though. We're all caught up, guys. We can uh, – whew. We can let out a sigh of relief here now for a minute. And now that we're all caught up on the letter of intent. I'm going to take a swig of my coffee and then I will finally catch up on your all's comments here. All right. There we are. There we are. Timmy Green. Appreciate you as always. He says, got his wish confirmed on safety. Thanks. We'll definitely be a better ball team next year. Hey, I agree, man. And if we're better, and that's saying something because, you know, what, eight wins and near the top of the conference. So I think if we get better, we're going to be competing for that conference title. You know, some people look at me like I'm crazy when I say watch out for us in the Big 12 next year. But I mean it. I think it can happen. Bob Beckett says going heavy on DB in the signings and in the portal. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, was necessary. We knew, you know, you're losing Malachi Ruffin. You're losing Beanie Bishop. Uh, Montre Miller would need a waiver to return. Other than that, you're pretty young back there, just a Colby Spells and, you know, not much else besides, you know, some true freshmen. So certainly needed to make some additions, and I'm really excited about the ones that they've made, particularly the two transfers that we recently added, not to, you know, knock on any of these true freshmen coming at the defensive back position. I think they'll be good players down the line, but I think right away we potentially have our two starters right now in T.J. Crandall and um, Aiden Garns. They're at least going to compete with Jacoby Spells and Montre Miller and whoever else factors in there at that position, but I'm really excited about both those guys. Crandall has huge upside. I mean, you look at his offer list, and it goes crazy, man. So, for sure, definitely some uh, big pickups here. Um, see if I can scroll back here. Uh, G Smart and a Farmer signed with us. That was, you know, previously before. I know he, you were one of the first ones that I saw uh, put that in there. That got me excited. G Smart and had to catch up quick after that. Uh, Timmy Green says he thinks we've hit a home run with all the recruits we have so far. I think it's a really good cl class, man, especially, you know, you pull that coup, you still day-day farmer. Uh, I think it's, you know, shaping up to be a really good one. Paul Bly says, loving your content in Denver. Go Mountaineers. Hey, Rocky Mountain High over there in Denver, right? I appreciate that, man, Paul, uh, out there on the, you know, got some love out there on the West Coast today. I had somebody else in there from California earlier, so that means a lot, man. And uh, like I said, you know, Mountaineers are all over the country. So that's why I always think it's good, you know, always trying to, preach in the videos when I talk about subscribing that it helps us and helps, you know, the other people, because if we're pushing out, you know, more subscribers, more likes on these videos, pushes the content out more. And so then it can reach more people and, you know, people can find it that are, you know, in other locations other than, you know, around me here in West Virginia. And, you know, it seems to be working because we got people finding it in California yourself watching in in Denver and uh, really appreciate that, man. And we'll continue to keep the content coming here. We'll cover this, you know, recruitings uh, throughout this, rest of this day if we don't have anything come in before i finish this stream maybe i'll do a recap video uh later tonight we're covering basketball throughout the season 
uh, continuing to cover the transfer portal. I've been dropping updates on that, you know, every couple of days, sometimes multiple updates in a day. And of course, we'll do these live streams, try and do at least once a week. And uh, throughout football season, it's twice a week. So plenty of opportunities to come here, chat with other Mountaineer fans and, you know, share your thoughts and stuff. So really appreciate you, man, out there on the West Coast, you know, from the East Coast to the West Coast. Let's go Mountaineers indeed. Um, Luke Bart says, everyone like this for Jordan always has great content. Hey, Luke, I appreciate that, man. Great shout out there. Yeah, hit that thumbs up button, guys. Really does help a ton. Dunbar just committed. Louise came in with that earlier. I appreciate that. Uh, Ocho was 85. See you adding it as well. We got Dunbar. So that was good. good addition, you know, to the running back room. Another one that wasn't previously verbally committed that we thought may come down today did. So I think that's a good job by the staff here late, right, getting the additions that they really needed to, you know, to pull off, you know, I guess you can call it a couple of coups with Day Day Farmer. And, of course, uh, Dunbar there in the backfield as well. And I can't, you know, fail to mention Dom Collins, uh, one of my personal favorites in this class. Uh, awesome to see them, you know, extend that offer finally and sign him. Like I said, guys, if you get a chance, you know, maybe I'll share it here later if, if I'm on here long enough uh, to share some of his highlights or something. But I know I shared them in a previous live stream and they were linked there. But, you know, look them up. They're on Huddle. Um, hopefully they've got some stuff up of his recent uh, games because his performance this year in the state playoffs was awesome. Like I said, you know, if you didn't get to hear it earlier in the West Virginia playoffs this year, you know, he plays for Princeton High School down here in Mercer County in West Virginia. Princeton had never been to the state championship before, and to finally get them there for the first time in their school history in the state semifinals, he goes off for nine catches, 330 yards, and four touchdowns. Also, you know, great plays on kickoff return, you know, the hand in the ball some too. He was a do-it-all guy for Prince and just, you know, get the ball in his hands, throw him a screen, let him make a play. And, you know, just to show that he, how impressive he was for this coaching staff, and, you know, you can find the article about it on 247 Sports. I believe I shared it in that uh, previous live stream when I was pulling for us to offer him. Sub 4340 at WVU's camp, a 429, if I'm not mistaken. May have even been less than that. And not once, but twice. Did it back-to-back -back times. So we're talking about a guy with blazing speed. And West Virginia had several guys that have that blazing speed in this class and that can help out on special teams. He's one of them. Dana Farmer is one of them. And we've heard uh, Neil Brown mention a few others. So excited about, you know, Dunbar and all of these guys that committed here late and, you know, signed their letter of intents here on signing day, despite, you know, not previously being verbally committed. Uh, thank you, Timothy. Always appreciate you being here, man. Loyal Mountaineer fan, as always. Jim says the Mounties are going to be monsters next year. I really do think so, man. You know, we got to get make sure this defense is good, but I think with the pieces that we're adding, I think this defense can really be solid. You know, you look at what we bring back, especially at the linebacker position. We've got a lot of great young talent there returning from injury already with, you know, Trey Lathan and Trotter, who both, you know, missed this season. You know, Trotter missing the entire season. Lathan was a big part of it before his injury. And then, of course, Cutter got a ton of experience in his absence. But then we're bringing in a ton of players. I did a video today on Reed Carrico. If you haven't had a chance to check that out, go check it out. We added a transfer from Ohio State at the linebacker position that was extremely highly regarded coming out of high school. I think we needed to make additions there at the linebacker position. We've done that. Obviously, the big hole we needed to fill was the defensive back room. We've certainly addressed it in the portal. We've certainly addressed it in this class. Now we've got to hope that we can keep some players intact throughout this offseason. But having said that, I'm sure you guys know the rumors of us potentially losing a safety and who that may be. I, you know, I don't have any insight on that as to if he's going to stay or if he's going to go. I wish I did. I do not. But having said that, I think West Virginia is doing a good job, you know, adding enough pieces that if, you know, something does happen and they do lose someone there in that back end, that they've got enough guys there that could potentially fill in and still, you know, hopefully not miss a beat there because the player that's rumored to maybe be leaving is, a, you know, a really good one. You know, was throughout this season uh, once he returned from injury. I'm sure you guys have heard those rumors, but we'll see what happens. But I think if this defense really takes shape and you can find, you know, a couple Beanie Bishops, and I think West Virginia maybe have done, may have already done that. Uh, we'll see. But if you can do that and you, they, if they come anywhere close to playing as good as he did, then I think West Virginia really has a great chance because I think the offense isn't in question with what we saw here late in the season. Those players are only going to get better when you're talking about the Garrett Greens, the Jaheim Whites, Traylon Rays, Hudson Clements, you know, all these freshmen that we're raving about here. The offense is going to be explosive. You know, Cole Taylor returns. Most of the offensive line returns. I think the offense is certainly going to be there if the defense can do their part. I don't see why you're not talking about a potential 9-10 win West Virginia team next year. I think they could be monsters, Jim. I do. Seven home games as well. Great point there, Randall. That, you know, bodes well also. If West Virginia goes 7-0 and at home next year, it's a 10-win football team, I think, guys, because I, I think we can still three, three road wins. Joey, good to see you in here, man. Appreciate you uh, 
hopping in here. Always good to see the great Joey Foster in here, guys. But um, make sure that no other commits have come in yet. And uh, other than that, I guess I'm just kind of chilling, chatting with you guys. Maybe we'll pull up some highlights on some of these guys. Um, if we can in the meantime, but, uh, oh, we did, we did have one come in. Sweet, sweet. Perfect. Perfect timing. Right. When I catch up on the chat, we get a, uh, another announcement coming in. So that's good. Don't believe we've got Neil Brown's thoughts on it up yet, but by the time we talk about it a little bit, we may indeed have that. Let me try and get everything ready to pull up here for you guys. But we have another commit and it was a previous verbal that we were waiting on to come in as a signing. And now we've added it. And that is linebacker Ricky Williams, guys. Uh, yeah, not that Ricky Williams. I know it's uh, funny enough, same name, right, as I'm sure you guys remember the great uh, running back there in the NFL uh, previously played. But uh, same name there, no relation. Ricky Williams joins the 2024 WVU class at the linebacker position. Another recruit joining the Mountaineers out of the state of Ohio. He's from the city of Akron there, Archbishop High School there. So well, let's see if they have uh, Neil Brown's thoughts up on him yet. If not, we'll go ahead and share his 247 rating before uh, they drop that. Looks like they don't have Neil Brown's thoughts up yet, so that's all right. We'll go ahead and share his 247 sports page, and then we can add him to the signing list as well if we need to before we can hear Neil Brown's thoughts on this addition to the linebacker room as we were talking about West Virginia continuing to you know improve that linebacking uh, room right on core, right, right on core, right on cue. Uh, Ricky Williams joins this class, signs his letter of intent in West Virginia, Announces his addition, 6'2", 215-pound linebacker. Good frame coming in, good length there at the linebacker position. A little bit longer than some of the linebackers West Virginia has. I think, you know, Lathan, 6'1", and Cutter about the same. So get him coming in at 6'2". And, uh, you know, Reed Carrico, the transfer I was talking about from Ohio State, 6'3". So West Virginia adding some bigger linebackers in this class. And uh, good length here on Ricky Williams with the 6'2 frame. 26th rated player in the state of Ohio, one of the top recruits there in that state, and one of the top linebackers nationally, top 60, rated as the number 56 linebacker in the country. Three-star recruit with an 88 rating there, so highly regarded there in this class. So glad to hear that, and we can now add him to the uh, transfers in list. There I go. I said it again, transfers in list. I can't get the transfers off my mind. West Virginia's been so hot on the transfer portal trail after that big visit weekend this week. And I've been doing so many transfer portal uh, videos. I keep wanting to call our uh, signing list here a transfer list, but it's our signing list here for national signing day for the CRW signing day extravaganza here. And we can now add Ricky Williams to the signing list. So now we are just awaiting one of the bigger additions of this class, you know, I guess is uh, saving one of the best for last potentially with Obina and Wuka. We will just await him now and we're pretty much all caught up now at this point. Let's see if we've got Neil Brown's thoughts on Ricky Williams yet. And I can share that with you guys. Other than that, I'm going to encourage you guys to, uh, you know, drop your thoughts there in the chat and uh, we'll, you know, continue just to chat a little bit until Neil Brown's thoughts come in or until Obina's commitment come in, comes in as well. Hopefully it'll come in in the near future and, before I uh, finish the live stream here. And it looks like I might not have to do a recap video because everything seems like it's going to come in while we're live here, which is a uh, very nice, very nice thing here. Uh, and I see uh, Louis shared it there in the comments that Ricky committed. Appreciate that, man. Let me know there um, in the comments. I'm trying to see if they've got you know, Brown's video up on it yet. Uh, still no go on it. So, uh, We'll just uh, hang out for a few guys and uh, chat a bit until uh, Nell Brown drops his thoughts here on the addition of Ricky Williams and I'll share that short video once it comes through here on the West Virginia football recruiting page. And I guess I should uh, shout those out. Obviously, if you guys haven't noticed, um, been sharing the uh, announcements from the at WVU football X page. And then of course, Neil Brown's videos. If you want to find these for yourself and go back and watch some of them through on the at WVU football recruiting page there on X as well. So that's what we've been sharing here. And of course our own little uh, list that I always like to put together here on the CRW, but Still awaiting Neil Brown's thoughts on Ricky Williams. I'm going to take a swig of my coffee and catch up on some comments here in the meantime. Joey says, yeah, man, we're a 10-win team next year, but this is a tough conference and only getting harder adding Utah and Arizona. Yeah, that's why you know I fall short of saying, hey, we're going to win the Big 12 or anything. I, that's why I'm just saying that I think we're definitely – going to compete for that conference title. We have the potential to wind up in a Big 12 championship game. But it's going to be so different having the, you know, 14-team conference and still it's going to be really interesting to see how it plays out because we're not doing pods. We're not doing divisions. They're just essentially, you know, 
still going to have the top two teams play for the top conference title. So that could shake out in a weird way with, you know, when you got, you know, what, 12 teams, but not everybody playing everyone, obviously, only nine conference games. So it's going to be interesting for sure. Uh, but, you know, the Pac-12 schools coming in next year, adding to the already newcomers that we had this year, throwing those in the mix, it's going to be interesting. Utah and Arizona both going to be top 25 teams. I'm expecting West Virginia to be as well. So it's going to be a fun conference to see how things shake out next year and see how – West Virginia shapes up against, you know, everyone else. And I think what's exciting about it, though, is, and exciting about West Virginia improving right now at the time that they are and potentially, you know, hitting their stride in the Neil Brown era like it looks like they could be, you know, next year will kind of determine that. If they do find this success that it looks like they can potentially have because this is the first time that Neil Brown and the staff has had something going into this season, and that's expectations. They haven't really had that yet. You know, it's been a lot of question marks previously, and they've been able to be the underdog. So hopefully, you know, next season, you know, they don't have that, you know, rat poison effect and uh, take hold or whatever, and we can see what happens. But if everything is shaping up in the way that it appears to be positively now for West Virginia, I think it's right at the perfect time with, you know, Texas and Oklahoma leaving the conference, even with the additions that are coming in, all the programs are kind of very close to a level playing field with West Virginia in terms of NIL money, recruiting level, you know, all of those things. West Virginia can compete with everyone that's going to be in this conference, I think. And so I think it leaves West Virginia in an interesting position, kind of similar to where we were in the latter days of the Big East once we had a chance to really, you know, win that conference year in and year out. I think right now West Virginia is in a good position in this Big 12 conference where they can find a way to compete next year, maybe reach the Big 12 title game, you know, finishing the top of the conference, they're going to have a chance to do that year in and year out. And if you're doing that now, let's not forget the college football playoff is expanding. And with its expansion to 12 teams, these power conferences, if you win that conference, if West Virginia finds a way to make that Big 12 title game, win that conference title game, you're in. You're in the college football playoffs. So West Virginia is really hitting their stride at the perfect time right now and a chance to you know compete for a Big 12 title which means that we could see West Virginia in a college football playoff in the near future, guys. It's not out of the realm of possibility. How crazy is that? You know, we're sitting here this time last offseason. Bet you never would have thought that. But this Mountaineer squad has really turned it around. And shout out to this coaching staff. You know, they took some criticism, but now they're deserving of the praise. And especially uh, with this class they put together today, I think. So I appreciate that, uh, Joey. And encourage anyone else, you know, drop your thoughts in here. We'll chat a little bit as we await uh, this video on Ricky Williams. Let me see if it's up yet. I know I rambled on there as I'm – tend to do so it may have came up in the meantime no, still nothing surprisingly uh but uh yeah let's see what else we got in the chat here bob beckett what do we think our final national ranking will be in recruiting today i haven't taken a look at it but if history holds true i would say high 30s low 40s which would be you know pretty good for us and i think um if we finish Top six, top seven, top eight in the Big 12, I'm, I'm happy with that for sure. I think that we have potential to finish higher than that, especially now that we stole Day-Day Farmer. Um, see if we can get a – see if I can get a look at where the class is ranking currently. I'm guessing it's somewhere in 30s or 40s probably. Uh, composite rank 46, yeah. So typically about, you know, around where we usually are. And, you know, Neil Brown doing a good job in recruiting yet again. I think Day-Day uh, -Day Farmer will, you know, raise the level of the class. But – also, you know, we got to remember with these rankings, as far as, you know, when you're ranking class rankings, it's so difficult because it's determined by size a lot. So West Virginia has, you know, decent sized class this year. Looks like we're going to have, what, 22 names probably. Uh, so that's pretty good size. But in the past, we've been hurt in our ranking because we've had, you know, 16, 17, 18 commits. So if a program has, you know, 26 commits, they're going to shoot way up in the rankings. So I think, you know, a good way to look at it is average, like I think it's average star rating of the class or something like that. It's a little bit more accurate. But West Virginia, I think, will finish, you know, in the 30s or 40s. And uh, I think they've got some really good players in this class. But also, I tend to not buy too much stock into where the class is ranked, really, just to be honest with you. Because I think a lot of times you just got to kind of hone in on the individual guys, watch their tape, make your judgment for yourself. And, you know, see if that holds true when they, you know, hit the field in Morgantown. Because I think a lot of times, we've seen it in the past a ton, West Virginia brings in guys that fly under the radar but end up being very special players. I mean, you can go through the list in history, you know, back to, you know, Pat White, Steve Slayton. Obviously, you know, there's way more before that. But, you know, those are two that pop up early. And then you look recent classes, C.J. Donaldson, you know, Jaheim White, all of these guys that West Virginia has added at the skill positions that really fly under the radar. And I think they've continued to do a good job finding those type of players here with this coaching staff as well. So despite, you know, the national ranking might not be 
you know, something that a lot of people are excited about. I'm really excited about this class when you look at it, you know, with a microscope, I guess you should say, Bob. But I'd say, you know, somewhere in the 40s, if we're lucky, maybe we'll hit into the 30s somewhere. Joey says he worries about the new Big 12. We could literally have three or four teams go 11 and one. Somebody could get left out. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm worried about too, Joey. I was kind of really hoping if they weren't going to do divisions, they would do like a pod system or something. Just because I am kind of worried about it as well. Without everyone playing each other, it could get messy with tiebreaker scenarios and such. So I'm worried about it too. But also maybe it does happen one year early on, right? Maybe something happens next year that's funky. And the silver lining to that would be the least then that would allow, you know, force them to make a change to where, okay, now we've got to do division so that we end up having, you know, don't have this problem again. But I'm worried about it too, but let's hope, you know, the best situation possible comes out that can when it comes to that because it could very well affect West Virginia, right? And, it, you know, leave it to, you know, Mountaineer fans to, you know, for us to finally, you know, have a good team, make a great run. You know, we go 10-2, and 11-1 and one and get left out of the conference title game on a, coin flip or some crazy bullshit like that you know that would be typical uh mountaineer fandom right <laughs> hopefully, hopefully not let me knock on wood I don't, I don't know if i have any nearby but you know theoretically i'm knocking on it because i wouldn't want that to happen but luke says thanks for the coverage i'm at work and can't keep looking back but listen to this is all i needed i appreciate that a lot luke that means a lot man I was hoping people would have a chance to tune into it if they didn't even get to watch you know i know First time trying to cover it live. I wanted to start at 8.30 this morning. Maybe next year I'll get to start a little bit earlier. But the good news about it is I did get a chance to react live to, you know, the commitments of Don Collins, Day Day Farmer, Dunbar, and some of the other guys that weren't verbally committed. So that was fun, and I enjoyed doing it. So I really appreciate the love on it, man. And, uh, you know, if you are in here and you've enjoyed this, hit the thumbs up button. If you haven't enjoyed it, you know, maybe hit the thumbs up button anyway. It still will help me out. <laughs> but I appreciate everyone that's in here live. Or even if you're watching on playback, you can still like the video. It would help a ton. WVU fan, college football fan, Big 12 fan in general, be sure to subscribe here. Uh, we talk some Big 12 stuff too as well, especially on our podcast episodes. So plenty of Mountaineer sports content. If you're a WVU fan, definitely be sure to uh, subscribe here. I really enjoyed it. You know, first time covering this live, and it's it's a lot of fun. So continue to encourage you guys to drop your thoughts there in the chat. Let's see if we got anything else, uh, anything new coming through yet. Nothing yet. So, uh, you know, if, if we don't get anything from Abina and, uh, before I get a chance to wrap up, maybe like I said, I'll do a, a command video. Lo and behold, speak of the devil and shall appear three minutes ago. A bean on Wuka signs, guys. We got the letter of intent that we've been waiting for. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's see, guys. Let me pull up the stuff here, and we'll talk a little bit about this edition. I think, in my personal opinion, probably the addition on the defensive side that I'm most excited about. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry, guys. I'm starting to lose my voice. been talking for, a, what, I've been talking for 90 minutes here probably. Close to it. Let me take a swig of my coffee as I pull up some of Obina's stuff here as we have a very important letter of intent that's finally came through here for West Virginia now. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. <clears throat> Still can't get some, some, something in my throat or something. All right. I'll just talk a little quieter. Hopefully you guys can hear me all right. I can turn the mic up if necessary, but it's usually pretty loud. Um, and here we are. Obinon Wuka, guys. Edge rusher. Great pass rusher. I think he's going to be a big addition to this class. I think, you know, as far as high school additions, he's one of the better pass rushers West Virginia's added. He's very highly regarded, one of the bigger additions of this class, like I talked about. And another addition from the state of Maryland. Talk about West Virginia doing a great job on these borderline states. Another recruit from the DMV, and he's highly regarded. Let's take a look at his 247 ratings. And as you can see here, Great size. I think he'll have a great chance to come in and play right away. I'm not 100% sure he's an early enrollee, but if he is, I think then that bodes well for him. You know, we need to fill in with some edge pressure. We've added Ty French, who I think is going to be amazing. But, you know, he's a one-year guy. So when you're looking down the line for the future, Obina definitely has a lot of, you know, potential high ceiling and potentially a window to get in there. I think he fits in at the bandit position. Maybe they'll bulk him up, try and play him on the line. I doubt it. I think he's prototypical bandit for West Virginia. And I think it could be the bandit of the future for this program. And I'm excited about it. You know, with a loss of James Hurd, 
you know, we thought could be the future of the man in position, decides to transfer this year, winds up at Syracuse. Getting Obina's letter of intent is really important in this class and one of the most important additions on the defensive side, in my opinion. But let's let his rating speak for themselves, as you see here. A top 50 edge in the entire country. That's big for West Virginia. We're not a program that particularly, you know, does a great job in bringing in those, you know, pass rushing specialist guys, especially ones that are highly rated. Those guys go quick as far as edge guys the top ones in the country. So really glad to see West Virginia land a top 50 edge player in the country now. 88 rating, you see very highly regarded there, top 20 player in the state of Maryland. Really excited about this addition to the West Virginia football recruiting class. Sees a three-star there on 247 Sports, but four-star on most other services. And I think that he's a very, very important addition. So let's add him here. We finally now have all of the verbal commitments in tow, guys, and now all of our verbal commitments have become signings for the Mountaineers. So not only does this staff not have any players surprise and flip away, but they're able to flip in a couple of players that had not verbally committed, including Day Day Farmer, who was previously committed to UCF. So you still went away from a rival conference foe now in 22 commits for West Virginia or signings, I guess we can say, as these letter of intents have now come in with Obina and Wuka being the latest. No more verbal commitments, guys. It's signings now here on our CRW signing day extravaganza and a great class here for West Virginia. You see it locking down the state, getting the top players in the state with Curtis Jones, Keyshawn Robinson, and Dom Collins. And then you lock down the borderline states as well with guys like Makai Byerson, Kyle Altooner, Jason Cross, Keon Washington, Justin Terry, Jackson Marco, Zay Jennings, Brandon Raymond, Dior Hubbard, Khalil Wilkins, Ricky Williams, Obina and Wuka. And then, of course, you dip into the South, get you some talented athletes out of Georgia and Florida and the Carolinas with Israel Boyce, Trevon Dunbar, Day Day Farmer, the big steal that West Virginia was able to pull off there. You love to see that. Chris Henry, the defensive back, no relation. Defensive lineman Nate Gabriel as well. So great class for West Virginia here. I'm super excited about who are you guys most excited about in this class? Let me know there in the chat. Uh, maybe let me know your player on offense you're most excited about, your player on defense you're most excited about, or someone who you feel like is super underrated. I think I've shared mine already in this one, kind of tipped my hat that I'm really excited about it being on defense. And then, of course, for you know personal reasons, I think Dom Collins and Day Day Farmer are my two favorites on the offensive side there. But that's what we have here as far as signings for the Mountaineers. See if we got any uh, video up on Neil Brown. On either one of these, looks like it has not came through yet, guys, unless I'm just missing it here. But uh, really excited about this class for West Virginia and how it's shaped up here now um, with this right now. So see if we got any, uh, anything coming up in the chat, guys. And we'll just chat a little bit here as we await Neil Brown's video on these two. But um, if we don't get that in the near future, I'll probably sign off before too much longer. I thought we were going to have at least you know a couple hours long live stream here, but maybe not. We'll see. Uh, how it goes as a lot of this class came in super quick. You know, I, I thought some of these guys weren't going to sign until two, three o'clock. That's one of the reasons I pushed the live stream back from eight 30 to 11 30. That along with the fact that I had some other uh, personal issues going on this morning, my wife being sick, being one of them. And then also woke up this morning to a uh, text from the water company that the water line was here was busted and the boil water advisory for 24 hours. Once they got it cut back on, it was supposed to be off for seven hours. Came on about an hour before I was about to start the stream here. So then I had to drain my hot water heater, turn it off, you know, cut it back on, all that good stuff, just in time to start the stream. So that's one of the reasons I pushed back from 8.30 to 11.30, but still think it worked out really good just because, like I said, we got to live react to, you know, some really important commitments. Dom Collins, Day Day Farmer, Dunbar, the ones that weren't really necessarily – 100% coming through because they weren't verbals in the past. So that was fun. Next year, we might try and start it earlier, about 8.39 in the morning, hopefully, and uh, try and do this again here on the Country Roads webcast channel, a CRW signing day extravaganza. But this is the inaugural edition, first time doing this, and I think it's been really fun. So I um, encourage you guys here, you know, we'll stay with you guys a little bit longer as long as you guys want to chat. Drop anything in there you want to talk about. It doesn't have to be in relation to this class. It can be in relation to anything you want to talk about there. But uh, let me know some of your favorite players, though, if you want to – Share something from this class. Would love to hear that and uh, catch up on some of your all's chats here as we await uh, potential video from Neil Brown on some of these recruits. Um, if that doesn't come through, that will wrap up here before too much longer. But really excited about this class and how it's shaped up for West Virginia to this point. So.
been, it's been fun. It's been fun, guys. And, you know, one more time, I want to encourage you guys, if you're live or on a playback, hit the thumbs up button. Helps a ton. And uh, be sure to subscribe to us here if you haven't already. Um, try and catch up on some of your all's comments here now. Joey Foster says he's not too worried about uh, recruiting rankings this year. Such a young team. Don't need a lot and expect us to be ranked around 45 to 55 when it's all done. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm expecting somewhere in the 40s as well, Joey. But like I said, I'm really excited about this class. I think when you look at it individually and you go look at these uh, recruits, I think West Virginia's really done a good job finding guys that fly under the radar. Typical for West Virginia, right? We bring in some underdogs and guys with chips on their shoulder. Fits us as a state, fits us as a program, and really helps the culture that we've built here. And I think Neil Brown's done a good job building that type of culture. We saw them this year harness that underdog mentality and lead to this eight-win season. So that's good. But I also think the staff did a great job addressing, you know, the positions of need with players that can, you know, fill in in the future behind, you know, some transfers that they're bringing in to fill in right away in some areas where necessary. And then you also have some special freshmen that could fill in right away as well. So I think they're doing a great job in this class when you look at it individually. How many are going to enroll early? Great question, G. Smyrna. Let's see if I can find anything on that. I know of a few, uh, but let me see if I can uh, pull anything up on that, if anyone has come out with an official list or anything. If not, I'll probably do a video on that. I uh, did it last year. An early on a video on an er, on er, excuse me a video on early enrollees uh, last year. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to find something real quick on the fly, G Smarna, but if not, I'll do a video here in the future, maybe in the next couple of weeks or so, once we know for sure 100% who's early enrolling, um, and do a video on uh, their early enrollees because I don't, you know, just on a quick Google, it's kind of hard to find that right here off the bat. But I know Neil Brown mentioned a couple um, in his uh, videos on them. I think one was Elijah Kinsler. Um, not, not hundred percent sure on all the others, but, uh, definitely, uh, G Smyrna, like I said, don't know for sure right now, but I will get back to you on that. If I don't find out before this stream's over, I'll do a video on it on the channel in the near future. Joey Foster says picking up two more four-star receivers is great to go with Gallagher. Makes me feel good about that position. Yeah. I'm, I'm really excited about the future of the wide receiver position right now. I think that we're absolutely set right now, guys. I mean, you look. Outside receivers, you know, Hudson Clement, Traylon Ray, they can do that there. You know, you bring in Jaden Bray. I think he can bring be a good outside receiver as well. Um, you know, I think that um, Day Day Farmer can play inside or outside. But, you know, when you look at some of those speedy inside guys, Gallagher that Joey mentioned, we've got him now. We have Day Day Farmer who can play there. And then I mentioned Dom Collins from Princeton, you know, sub 4 three forty speed. So look at the speed that's going to be on this offense next year, guys. Hudson Clement, Traylon Ray, Rodney Gallagher, Dom Collins, Day Day Farmer, Jaheim White. I mean, that is a ton of speed for this offense. The wide receiver position looks to be in good hands for the future for sure. Pokemon Kid Entertainment, appreciate you tuning in and chiming in. Love the signing day. Way to go, West Virginia. Indeed, indeed. Uh, said he lives in Virginia, but from McDowell County. Once a Mountaineer, always a Mountaineer. Hey, I'm right there by you, man. I'm uh, over here in Mercer County. So, uh, hey, speaking of, they're supposed to have that uh, highway finally done sooner or later. You know, maybe eventually, but Jim said he was watching that Princeton uh, Bridgeport game at home. He lives in Bridgeport. I made a comment on the game that said one of the Princeton players was the fastest kid in West Virginia. Yes, that is the one I'm talking about. Uh, Jim Dom Collins is his name. Uh, matter of fact, I've shared it here on a live stream on the pa on the past. Um, his brother has uh, sent them to me. I'm uh, friends with Dom Collins' brother. Like I said, I'm from the same county here, Mercer County. Uh, these aren't his highlights from this season. These are from his junior season. But if you get a chance, look up some stuff on his senior season. Actually, let me see if I can find anything on that state championship game, guys. Um, because, I mean, his performance in the state playoffs was so impressive. But, yeah, they, he's probably the fastest player in WV, and I would argue he's one of the fastest receivers in the country. Um, sub 4340, you can find it on 247 Sports. I think they did an article about it. Um, I was wanting to find if they had any highlights from uh, this year's state playoffs. But if not, I'll, I'll show you guys some of his highlights real quick from his junior tape. Um, let me pull this up. I'll just share the junior tape real quick with you guys. I've shared this in the past on the channel when I was hoping West Virginia would offer him. His brother asked me to share it, you know, um, trying to, you know, just spread the word about him because he was a super talented guy flying under the radar. Uh, but West Virginia finally pulled the trigger, I think, after Neil Brown saw him play up there in the in Wheeling. But, yeah, he's – He's impressive, and I think he's got a chance to 
factor in as a return man, if nothing else. Um, super, super fast guy. Um, see if I can share this with you guys real quick. And uh, actually, while these play, that will give me an opportunity, guys. Uh, like I said, it's been 90 minutes here. So I'm going to uh, try and run to the restroom real quick, but I'll let these highlights play. Uh, so it might be silent here for a second, but I'll uh, be right back with you guys. But this is Dom Collins from Princeton, right where I'm at. Mercer County, guys, uh, just signed in this class. Uh, I'm going to share his highlights for you guys just to get a taste of, you know, some of his returnability and some of the speed. And let's not forget, this is his junior highlights. This is even from this year. So at this point, he was what, you know, what are you, 17 years old at most as a junior in high school. So now he's, you know, more developed. Uh, put on more weight. Um, he works with a guy I know, you know, as well. T.J. Benners is a personal trainer. Um, I grew up, you know, with T.J. as well, and uh, he does a great job uh, with personal training. He's really um, put a lot of weight on Dom, and Dom's going to add even more once he gets in with Mike Joseph. But uh, this is from his junior season. So check these out real quick, guys. I'm going to run to the restroom, and I'll be right back with you guys. All right, guys, so some of Dom Collins' highlights there for some of you guys that may not know that in-state recruit here from down on the bottom part of the state. I think he's going to be a player in the future for West Virginia, sub-4340. But I did see Luis Burgo say Neil Brown press conference is on. Let's see if we can uh, let's see if we can pull it up. Let's watch it together. Potentially. I'm guessing it's on the WV Sports Facebook page. Bear with me, guys. We'll see if we can uh, catch a little bit of this live, shall we? One-two combo, but you don't see the one-two-four. And uh, he's at Jefferson High School, and, uh, you know, he's an athlete. He can play either side. Uh, I was really – um, I've been really impressed. The kid's a hard worker, and and he's going to be a really good player. Jackson Marco is a, is a guy that that played his best football as a senior, uh, transferred to Anderson High School, and uh, in Cincinnati, and uh, he he's a guy that's big. He's got the size right now. Um, he had a really good receiving uh, year for them, um, and he'll be here early as well. And Justin Terry is uh is just a, a huge human being. Um, he's got great feet. He's got length. It's going to be a developmental process for him. Um, but I think very similar to, to Johnny Williams, who we feel really good about being a factor for us next year. Uh, Keon Washington came to camp this summer and ran well and played, played corner and showed the ability to play man coverage. He was at a camp where we had some really talented wideouts and he did a really good job, did a little bit of everything at St. Charles high school, played receiver DB, uh, kick return, punt return. Um, good athlete. He's versatile. Again, we'll start him at corner, but he could play all three positions in the secondary. 
Um, and then Khalil Wilkins, you guys that, that came, we had him in camp and then we had him in seven on seven. And the day we had him in seven on seven, he really put on a show, um, made all kinds of, of, of big time and, and I sit right there on the golf cart behind him. And that's kind of like any golfers, that's kind of like sitting on the first tee, right? And you got, you got the head coach sitting right behind you and he threw dime after dime and, uh, He's going to be here um, in a couple of weeks, and it's going to be, a, again, a developmental process for him, but he can run. Uh, he's legit fast, and when Mike gets – when Mike Joseph gets a hold of him, I think he'll add good weight and only get faster, um, and he's got all kinds of arm talent, and so I'm excited to work with him. And then our last guy, but certainly not our least, Ricky Williams uh, from, from Archbishop Hoban, and just a winner. That That's a program that's won. He played receiver as a sophomore, and – his body changed, and he moved to, to Mike linebacker as a junior and senior. Um, and I think his best football is, is in front of him, and he was really productive at Hoban. And so just a tough kid and and really good addition. And I like what we're doing. You know, I think that we're making some strides at our first and second level. Defensively, we got to continue, you know, to build at our third level. So I know that was a long monologue, and uh, – but there's some people I wanted to recognize and, and I wanted to make sure I said everybody that we signed. So with that, the question's great. All right, guys. So I won't share the questions portion. Missed the opening part of it, but I saw Louis say no Brown Presser was on, so I figured we could at least catch some of his opening statement there. And in the meantime, I was trying to look up something on early enrollees, see if he mentioned anything about that. Uh, what I was able to find, I think G Smyrna asked earlier, like I said, I'll still try and do a video on it, who they are, but it says that uh, out of the 22 signees today, seven of them will enroll early, according to uh, Neil Brown. Uh, Brown also added that 16 of the 22 signees are in WVU's local six-hour radius. So, you know, that kind of goes with what I said earlier, talking about um, locking down not only the in-state recruits, but doing a great job recruiting the uh, uh, borderline states as well. Uh, Joey Foster says Trayvon Dunbar runs 11.600 meter and a 23.4200 meter. It's going to be a very fast team, very fast team indeed. Uh, some of the players we've added, Day to Day Farmer, Dom Collins, uh, Trayvon Dunbar, uh, Dior Hubbard, I think has good speed as well at the running back position. I think both the running backs that Virginia added today uh, seem to be pretty explosive. So uh, excited about that, excited about that, and excited about a lot of these additions, uh, guys. Um, I'm sure now that knowing Neil Brown's pressure's up, uh, that that's probably why we didn't get the – uh, videos on of his commitments, uh, his thoughts on a couple of those final uh, signees that we had. But the good news is that we got to cover all 22 while I was live here today. Uh, it's been a lot of fun, guys, uh, but I'm sure you guys probably want to, you know, check out Neil Brown's press conference, you know, hear the questions portion of that and uh, catch up on some of the other signing day coverage. And I want to do that myself as well. And uh, like I said, I'm going to try and do a video in the near future. Uh, once I find out who the early enrollees are, we'll try and announce that here. Uh, but really enjoyed this. I'm looking forward to doing it again next season. And maybe next season, like I said, we'll try and start 8.30, 9 in the morning. But uh, one more time, guys, any questions you got there, drop them in the chat real quick. I'll touch on those one more time. But having said that, before we close out, just want to mention one more time, you know, if you're a WVU fan, be sure to subscribe here. We're going to have plenty of Mountaineer sports content coming in the near future. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of transfer portal updates over these next few days and, you know, a couple months or so leading up to spring practice. And then, after that, once the portal opens again, so there'll be plenty of football talk. We're going to have uh, the bowl game preview podcast, you know, which will be episode 185 of the CRW podcast um, here in season six. Uh, we'll be releasing, I'm going to try and release that Friday or Saturday. Steve and Brad and I are all going to be together. Finally got schedules to line up. Should all be able to talk about this matchup against UNC in the Mayo Bowl. Got that coming out in the near future, and we're going to continue to cover Mountaineer basketball as well. So if you're a WVU fan, be sure to subscribe here to the Country Roads webcast. Obviously, this YouTube channel puts out a bunch of content. We're putting out a bunch of updates, you know, daily. But you know, if you like listening, you know, to the audio only, uh, subscribe to us on podcast platforms as well, where we will release those podcast episodes. You know, at least two per week through football season, and then once basketball gets going, sometimes you get even more than that. So get those long form episodes on the audio side, and then here on the video side, we get all our you know short form video updates on transfer portal recruiting, roster management. You know, just any other news that pops up along the way. You never know what may happen. We'll have it here on the Country Roads webcast. So ask that you subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're in here live and you haven't, or if you're watching this on a playback and you haven't, just you know, take a second, scroll your mouse over, use your thumb if you're on a phone, whatever it is. Hit that little thumbs up button, you know, that little like button. Fast, easy, free to do, and uh, you know, really helps a ton. Helps this video hit that YouTube algorithm, pushes it out to more people, 
gets more Mountaineer sports content out to Mountaineer Nation. That's why I always say that because uh, it truly does. It pushes it out to more people, the more people that like, subscribe, comment, all those good things. But really enjoy talking WV with you guys and enjoy uh, this class that's uh, shaped up to be a really good one for West Virginia. Uh, before we close out one more time, I'll share the screen here of our signings list on the Country Roads webcast. Let's roll through these 22 names that West Virginia added in this class and the order in which they came in for the Mountaineers. Makai Byerson, a 6'5", 230-pound defensive lineman from the state of Virginia. Kyle Altooner, a 6'3", 285-pound offensive lineman from the state of Maryland. Curtis Jones, Jr., a 6'2", 210-pound linebacker from right here in the state of West Virginia. Keyshawn Robinson, a 5'11", 175-pound receiver from also right here in the state of West Virginia. Nate Gabriel, a defensive lineman, 6'4", 285-pounder from the state of Florida. Jason Cross, a 6'2", 170-pound defensive back from Pennsylvania. Keon Washington, a 6'5", 175-pound defensive back from Maryland. Justin Terry, a 6'6", 305-pound offensive lineman from the state of Ohio. Jack Samarco, a 6'6", tight end. 242 pounds, also from the state of Ohio. And defensive back Chris Henry, 6 foot, 185 pounder from the state of Florida. Zay Jennings, another defensive back, 6 foot, 292 pounder from the state of Ohio. Brandon Raymond, a 6 foot, 180 pound receiver from Pennsylvania. Elijah Kinsler, a 6 foot, 4, 250 pound defensive lineman from the state of New Jersey. Dior Hubbard, 5'11, 190 pound running back from Ohio. Lucas Austin, a 6'7", 265-pound offensive tackle from Illinois. Khalil Wilkins as the quarterback in this class, 6'190", pound left-handed signal caller from the state of Maryland. Dominic Collins, wide receiver from West Virginia, 5'10", 165-pounder. West Virginia locking down all three of the top players in the state this year with the addition of Dom Collins now, who was named the top player in the state of West Virginia there by Max Prep. Today, actually, or yesterday, I do believe. And then the big steal, the coup for West Virginia in this class that we were all hoping to see, they pulled off. Stealing Day-Day Farmer away from the state of Florida, 5'11", 165 pound, one of the highest rated players in the class there. And then Trevon Dunbar as well joins the class at the running back position, 5'10", 200 pounder from South Carolina. Israel Boyce, a 6'180 pound defensive back from the state of Georgia. Ricky Williams, a 6'2", 230-pound linebacker from the state of Ohio. And Obina Unwuka, a 6'2", 230-pound edge pressure guy from the state of Maryland that I'm really excited about as well. So those are the 22 letter of intents that West Virginia added today here. As we wrap up our CRW signing day extravaganza, I want to say appreciate everyone that tuned in here live and chimed in with us. Always enjoy talking with you guys on the live stream and look forward to chatting with you again in the near future. If you didn't get a chance to hop into this one live, be sure to follow us on social media. We're on X at WVU Country Roads, Facebook and Instagram, just Country Roads Webcast. We'll announce when our live streams are happening. If you're watching this one on a playback, maybe next time we're live, you can hop in and chat there with us live next time. But appreciate you tuning into this one, whether you're live or on a playback. It's been fun covering this signing day for West Virginia. 22 really successful uh, prospects joining this class of 2024, I think, and really bodes well for the future of Mountaineer football. And tip your cap to Neil Brown, this coaching staff, for the job they've done with this 2024 class, I think, here. As we wrap up our signing day special here on the Country Roads webcast, having said that, as always, I'm Jordan Cruz, and until next time, let's go Mountaineers. <laughs>